Uh, they're very excited about meeting you. Um, but we also tried to give you a little bit of education about some of the top things that you should be considering as you're doing, um, looking for new career opportunities. And one of them is really how to effectively use social media um, for your job search. So um, I'm going to pass you around a sign-in sheet. If you can just fill that out for us, that would be great. Um, and then we have uh, Ruth Ann here. And Ruthie is uh, our social media specialist at Rochester Works. Um, and so, uh, you know, she is going to show you a little bit today and talk to you about the power of using social media effectively as you do job search. And she's, she's a very good resource for me. I, I use her all the time. Uh, those of you that have me sharing with you all those quick ways to get to things on our website, that's all her work. Um, the email we talk about with all the uh, weekly information, again, that's all Roseanne. So uh, do enjoy her. We're very glad she's here. We're glad she's part of our staff and that we're able to share her with you today. So do enjoy. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. As Annie said, um, I'm the social media coordinator at Rochester Works. So the whole purpose of today and what Annie said in just a few short words is we want to, I want to show you why I believe social media is an incredible tool that you can use in your job search. As we address social media just in general, I completely realize that social media is a personal decision. Whether you choose to use it, you cho choose not to use it. And I just want to give you some tools to kind of consider the opportunity that you have to be able to use it to connect with your future employers um, and the tools that you have in order to just Take advantage of the opportunity to communicate your skills, communicate what you can do to, to improve your skills as you learn new technologies and move forward. So that's just a little bit about what we're going to talk about. But I want to tell you a little bit about myself so you know where I come from as far as my background and my perspective. I am a bachelor's graduate with um, advertising and public relations. So this is my world. I love marketing. I love promoting products, promoting ideas. and as I use social media for Rochester Works, I promote the information because it's really made an impact in my life as well. I went through some of the youth programs that Rochester Works offers for um, youth during the summer. And that was my first experience in a professional environment and it really opened my mind to a lot of new opportunities and new ways that I can use my skills for the, for the future. And stayed in touch with them and now I'm here today and I love it. So I just want to show you a little bit about Rochester Works in general and about how you can use social media for your job search. As we get into the specifics of social media, there's one key concept that I want you to keep in mind throughout the whole presentation. And I know it's been a very busy day, meeting a lot of people, and um, so I don't wanna go too deep into the information so that it's overwhelming, but I wanna give you enough information so that you can take this and you can go and you can learn more as much as you're willing to learn. It's out there, the resources are there, and so I'm just excited to share with you a little bit about what I know and what I've learned about social media. But as we go into this, I want you to keep something in mind. The overarching principle of what I want to share with you today is the importance of knowing and communicating your personal brand to employers. And in doing so, social media can be a part of your job search as you do this. So I want you to think of a product that you're very familiar with. When I think of toothpaste, I automatically think of Colgate because I've been using it for most of my life. So when you think about you and your job search, what comes to mind when people think about you? What comes to mind when an employer meets you for the first time or sees your resume? That should be a consistent, um, consistent communication of who you are and what you can do. So as we go through social media, I want you to remember that as a broad topic, broad concept for your job search, keep in mind that it's your personal brand. What, who you are, what you can do, and what you can offer to employers, that's what we want to communicate. And there's a lot of different tools to help you do that, so we're going to get into that. But this quote I really loved when I came across it. It says, be the real you, because everyone else is taken, and replicas don't sell for as much we consistently are telling you the importance of setting yourself apart from the competition. One way you can do that is by consistently communicating who you are and what you can do 
across all of the platforms that you use to communicate that in your job search. So I hope that helps to kind of give you an overarching idea to hold on to. And we're going to go through information about personal branding and how it relates to social media in your job search. These are the three main things that we're going to discuss today. We're going to go through a basic overview of social media. Um, primarily, we're going to touch on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. There are a lot more social media networks out there, but I'm going to go through the basics so that you have an understanding of how you can use it so that you can go out from here and you can learn as much as you want about what will be best for you, best for your job search, and best for the jobs you're looking for, depending on the industry. We're also going to talk about how, how you can do that, give you some tips and some more information, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about what you can do with all of this information. And um, I work for Rochester Works, and so since this, at, the end, at the end of this career conference, I want to just give you a tool to be able to follow up on all the information that you have received today so you can continue to engage with us and use our free resources. I'm continually astounded by the number of resources we have for people that I wish I knew about way before when I did because they're free and they're available and I want to give you just a glimpse of some of those resources so that you can take advantage of them as well. And like I said, we're, you're more than welcome to connect with us on all of our social media, um, but that's not why I'm here today. So as you leave, we have flyers in the back with the opportunity to tell you a little bit about what you will receive, what information we put out there to help you with your job search. Okay, so we're going to go into social media. And before we can really dive into the information, I want to just define what it is. So if you're comfortable with it at this point, if you're using it currently, if you've never used it before, I want us all to be on the same page as we're looking at this information. Um, social media, according to this definition, is websites, technologies, applications that allow the online sharing of information and encourage the interaction between individuals. The two key phrases that I want you to keep in mind define social media at its base. Those are the ones that I've highlighted here, the sharing of information and the interaction between individuals. That's the whole purpose of social media, to be able to share information with individuals that are not necessarily right there with you, to share information with individuals that may be former colleagues, former employers, to be able to share information or learn information from businesses that aren't necessarily here in Rochester but work in the same industry. So that's why it's such um, important to realize those two key ideas is because that's what all of these social media networks are based on. The idea that we want to share information and help people to interact online using these tools. So as long as we're all understanding that, um, I think the rest of it will just kind of fall into place. That we, once you've solidified your personal brand, you know what social media is and how it can be useful because that's the basic purpose of why it exists. We're going to jump into a little bit more of the specifics, but I want you to keep that in mind. So these are the big three, in my opinion, um, social media networks, particularly, particularly in the form of job search that I want to focus on today. Like I said, there are many, many, many social media networks out there. If you ever are curious, just go to Google and type in how many social media networks are there, and it will pull up lists of hundreds of sites from, that are across the world. So I'm going to focus on just these three, and um, I'm going to show you why I think they're useful. But before we do that, we're going to talk about what they are. Facebook, basically, is an online social media network for, net, for individuals and for businesses. And in doing that, it connects you based on relationships and common interests. These are two key things that define Facebook. So if you think about, if you have a Facebook profile, if you think about you know people, you know your friends, you know your family, they're connected on, connected on Facebook with you because you know them on a personal level. But you can also connect with businesses, and we're going to talk more about how that can be helpful for you as you research companies and as you look for opportunities. But basically, that is what Facebook is. It's just a way for you to connect with businesses and connect with people that you know 
who have common interests and common ideas, or you know personally. And this is a basic Facebook profile. If you aren't comfortable with it, or you've never used Facebook before, um, this may look a little funny because there's no pictures and no information. But I wanted to show you just the basic idea of what it is. Um, if you're interested in setting up a Facebook profile and you don't have one yet, all you need to do is go to Facebook.com and put in the information to sign up. But I want to remind you that a lot of the information that they ask for is optional. So as you're putting in information, be aware of what you're sharing, be aware of the information that you're putting on the internet, and we're going to talk more about some privacy ways to protect yourself a little bit later. But just so you know, as you're filling out, if you want to start using social media, know what's optional and know what's required. And if it's required and you're concerned about it, often they tell you why they're asking for it. So just be educated about it and be willing to research the information. And then we also have company pages. And this is a snapshot of our Rochester Works company page. And what you can do, um, aside from this being our page, I just want to show you that companies do have pages. And if you have not seen that or used that at all, that is an incredible tool for your job search. Because companies are posting information about jobs. They're posting information about their industry. They're sharing information about community and employee events. And I actually was speaking to um, one of the representatives from Rochester General today, and they said they're starting to create a page specifically for recruitment. So if you want or, and are interested in using Facebook, the companies are there. And being able to research them is an incredible tool. We're also going to talk about Twitter. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Twitter or if you've used it at all, but basically, Twitter is, in this definition, it's a microblogging website, which all that means is it takes little captures of information. The information put on Twitter is no longer than 40 characters. So it's a very brief snapshot of information that links to other information on the internet. And what it does is if you put information out on Twitter, you're updating your page, you're posting a tweet. And all that is is just a 40 little character snapshot of information. And you can also include something called hashtags. And it took me a long time to figure out what hashtags are. Because I've heard it many times, but I never actually saw why it was important until we started using Twitter more for Rochester Works. And hashtags are the little number sign and then a word that has no spaces and sometimes can be really hard to read, put at the end or in the middle of information. And all that does is it helps to categorize information. For instance, if I were to post a job lead today on the Rochester Works Twitter page, and I wanted to include information about a job here in Rochester, I could put the information, link it to a specific lead, and then include two little phrases that would help you, if you were looking for a job in Rochester, to find it. And that would be the number sign and then job search, or the number sign and Rochester. So if you were to go into Twitter, you could look for job search, Rochester, and just like you would on any other search engine on the internet, and you could find that information more easily. Does that make sense? It sounds a little bit complicated, but hashtags, all they do, they categorize information. They make it easier for people to find information about a specific industry, about a specific topic, and all of the information that you put on Twitter is also indexed by Google. So it becomes part of the Google information based on your username or based on your profile. Does that make sense? All right. So this is a website that is related to Twitter that really you do not need to have used Twitter before to use. Search.twitter.com is a website that you can go and you can look for information on Twitter without having to create an account. You do not have to sign up for anything. All you need to do is simply type in some of those keywords to see information that's being put up on Twitter about those topics. So if you are not wanting to dive into Twitter, but you want to see what information is out there, this is a great website for you to have. And if you miss any of the information um, before I go forward, if you miss any of this information, we're going to make notes from all of the workshops available on our um, virtual career center to download. 
So if you miss information, all of these websites and information are going to be in those notes so that later you can go through and have a copy and be able to click right from the information to a website. Yes? I'm not 100% sure, but we're going to work on it as quickly as possible. And while we're on Canva, what, what will be there? You will go to the Virtual Career Center, which I'll show you a picture of and give you the exact URL for in, at the end of the presentation. And it's also on the flyers that we have at the back. So I'll point it out to you so you know what to look for. Okay, now we're going to talk about LinkedIn. How many of you have heard of LinkedIn and using it for your job search? Probably because LinkedIn is the most popular job search social media network. And we're going to touch on why that's important today, but I want to just give you some basic information about it. If we're not going to go into a lot of the navigation, there's so many ways that you can use LinkedIn for your job search. So many ways to research and see who you know, how you know them, if they work at a specific company. So if you're interested in learning more of the in-depth, hands-on, LinkedIn information. We have a great workshop. It's called Link Up with LinkedIn at the Waring Road Career Center for Rochester Works. And that's an incredible tool if you want to dive completely into and focus on LinkedIn for your job search. This is just going to be a basic overview. I'm going to give you some tips, but nothing compared to what's out there. And there's a lot more information about LinkedIn and how you can use it. So keep that in mind as we go forward. I'm not going to be able to cover everything, but I want to cover the basics so that you know what's available to you. But LinkedIn, I like the um, comparison to a virtual Rolodex because LinkedIn connects you with professionals. It connects you with people, former colleagues, former employers, former companies. You can go on and you can see them. And you can connect with them and communicate with them on LinkedIn. Um, one thing that, one statistic for LinkedIn that I think a lot of people don't realize is that 100% of the Fortune 500 companies use LinkedIn. We should realize that companies are on there. And from those of you that were at the career or the panel this morning, I believe they mentioned the importance of connecting with them on LinkedIn. The companies are there. They're using it for their products. They're using it for information. And that's, they're also using it for recruiting. They're putting job information out there. We just have to be willing to learn these new technologies so that we can find it. And there's ways to ease the tension of learning these new things because there's resources out there that literally can take you step by step to learn the tools of how to look for work. So if you are interested, like I said, about LinkedIn a little bit more, um, one way you can do that is through coming to our workshop. Another way to get acquainted with the profile on LinkedIn is this website right here. LinkedIn.com slash profile slash sample. And like I said, that's going to be in our notes when they're available. But this website, you do not need to have an account. You do not need to create a profile to view it. All you need to do is you go to that website, and as you move your mouse to over different parts of your profile, it will show you what that part of your profile is supposed to be telling employers what that part of your profile is supposed to say, what it's supposed to do for you on LinkedIn. So this is a great tool if you've never used it and you want to just browse through some information, go to this website, just kind of look at the information that's on there. I don't know if David Fleming really exists, but this is a sample profile that LinkedIn has put together to help people become aware of their product. I'm sorry, did everyone get that? Okay, now we're going to shift gears. That's the basic overview of the three main social media um, networks that we're going to talk about today. But we're going to talk now about job search, which is all why we're all here. We're either looking for work, looking for alternative work, we're looking to connect with companies, we're looking for those job leads, we're looking for information to help us in our career goals. And that's why, that's why we're all here. And that's why... Um, I'm here as well as just to show you how you can do that through social media. As we jump into the job search, I'm sure many of you know an online job search and using the internet is a critical part of your job search today. We can't ignore the fact that the internet is, is crucial to so many different applications that are used for business today. 
but part of an online job search, though it includes the application, though it includes connecting with companies using email, it also includes social media. Whether or not we, we choose to take, take a part of that and use that, that's our own personal decision. But I want to just make you aware of the fact that it's there and give you the tools to do that. So I want to show you the two main perspectives of a social media's role in an online job search. First of all, you have the employers. And this allows them to get a glimpse of who you are outside of your cover letter, your resume, and your interview. That may be a little intimidating because those are the most formal parts of the job search. And those are very important, and that's why we focus on them a lot. But they also allow you, when companies research you on the internet, they're not necessarily looking for information to get you out of the running. They're not looking for information that's negative. They want to see the general person that you are to see if you'll fit in their organization. And this is just a part of that. So I'm going to show you more information about how, what they look for in a little bit. But before I do that, it also plays a big role for job seekers. Social media allows you to learn about companies, aside from their website, aside from the stuff that you receive from them in your email. Aside from all of that information, it allows you to learn even more. It also allows you to connect with current and former employ employers and colleagues. In doing so, you get those connections. They may be online, but I think we often forget that online connections with LinkedIn are also real life connections. We know these people. We can call them on the phone. We can talk to them, and that's crucial. This just gives us an opportunity to put that information somewhere where it can be saved, somewhere where we can access it quickly. And it also allows us to hear about jobs instantaneously. If you're connected to these companies and they post information about a job, a new job that you're looking for, you can learn about it faster than if they were to put it in a newspaper. They send it off to print. Afterwards, it takes a while for that to get distributed. That process has become instantaneous. And we do that through the internet and we do that through social media. This um, vice president of marketing, she made a comment about social media. She said, job seekers who are silent or invisible online may be at a disadvantage. They need to engage on social networking sites to increase their visibility and their searchability with prospective employers. What I want to point out from this is just to make you aware. Like I had said at the beginning, social media and whether or not you choose to use it is up to you. It's a personal decision. It's very personal. Um, you may connect with family. You may connect with friends. But if you choose not to use it at all, I just want you to know and be aware of the fact that that may be a disadvantage in today's job market. It may be something that you're going to have to overcome in other ways, and that can be done. But I just want you to be aware of it so that you can address it. And if you decide at the end of this workshop, I still don't think social media is for me in my job search, you may have to work harder in other areas to cover up for that. Because when employers see you on social media, they know that you're Techno technologically, excuse me, they're technologically able to handle what's coming in the world. If you're in marketing and you're not in social media, you need to start learning that because it's such an incredible tool to be able to communicate with customers and businesses. And it's one of those tools that we all have to learn. I have to learn it. If, you, if you've used it before, it's constantly changing. So as we continue to grow and we continue to learn more about it, you'll just, it's an ongoing skill. It's not necessarily something that you have to get a degree in at this point, but it's something that you need to take the time to research. Does that make sense? OK. And another part um, with social media, and this goes back to the whole personal branding piece of why using social media can be an incredible tool, is because you need to be consistent. Um, being consistent in communicating is something that we know. If someone appears to be one way in one situation and acts the complete opposite in another, we question who they really are. We question their authenticity. So if an employer connects with you in person and you are 
completely professional and they want to hire you on the spot, but then they receive emails from you that are not very professional, or they research you on your Facebook and that's not professional. Not to say that it's not personal, but it's not, it's not appropriate for the business world. They may question your authenticity. And that's something at the bottom of this quote that says that the same rules apply online. Communication and its basics are the same in person in many ways or in written communication like a letter. You use certain amount of, of professionalism to communicate in the written word. That should apply online as well. And I think that's something that too often we, f we forget. And so just remember that you know a lot of these skills already. It's just taking these skills and applying them to a, comp to a different environment, a different type of application, so to speak. As we go forward, this career builder survey was completed in 2012 by Harris Interactive. They hired and they worked with, um, they were hired by career builder to research hiring managers and HR professionals. They researched and interviewed and sent surveys to 2,303 people that are fully employed in the HR industry. They are not government employees, they're not self-employed employees. I guess that would make them owners, wouldn't it, if they were self-employed. But they researched and they asked them, what do you use to research the people that send you resumes? And these were their answers. And they go above 100% because they use more than one. 65% of them use Facebook. 63% use LinkedIn. 16% use Twitter, and 17% use other resources. So as you look at, they're, they're there, like I said. They're looking at who you are and what you communicate online. Not necessarily, they're not always looking for the negative. They're also looking for the positive. So we're gonna focus, not necessarily, if, you, if there's negative, then deal with that. But we wanna focus on the positive. What can you put out there? Yes. Craigslist? They do have jobs. Craigslist is more of a job board, like Indeed.com. Yes, that could be, but they use Craigslist more as a job posting site than a research site. They may use other sites such as Google, or they may call your references. That's, that would also go underneath the other. So we're going to focus today on reinforcing the positive so that you can communicate who you are. Because there's something that you guys can't do, that, I'm sorry, there's something you can do that I cannot do. There's something that you're specialized in and you have experience in that qualifies you for a job that most of us could not do. And so we want to just communicate that with somebody. We want to communicate that with the right person so that they can connect you with the right opportunity so that you can do what you do best to help that company grow, help that organization do something better than they've ever been able to do before. So we're just trying to help you do that. And we want to reinforce that the positive information. And 29% of those that were surveyed during this um, survey for Career Builder said that they found something positive on these sites that drove them to want to offer this candidate an interview, want to offer them the position. So companies are looking for real people they're looking for people that are well-rounded in their interests. They're looking for people that have experience and that want to grow with the company. And a lot of them are finding that some of these candidates have these qualities. These are qualities they mentioned that were positive. And I want you to notice that only two of them, the professional qualifications and the external references, are specifically what we would think of when you think of what they're looking for in your job search. Their specific skills. They want to hire the skilled workers that can do the job and do it well, but they also want to hire people that are good overall, that will work well with their current employees, that will stay with them and grow with them and work through challenges with them. So these are some of the qualities, some things that are positive that you want to make sure that you're communicating to employers on your social media networks, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, or just in general as you're communicating with them. So I want to tell you, there are three main things that I think we can use social media for in your job search. You can use it to find people, find companies, 
and find the jobs. Find those job leads. Because if you don't know about a job, you might not go for the job. So we want to help you know about them, help you connect with the right people, and help you research companies. First part of that, before you start getting into using Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn for your job search, you need to take the time to Google yourself. I've, I've heard it so many times that it's important. Go to Google, type in your name, and look at the information. But how many of us have actually done that? How many of us, if you have, that's great. And um, if you haven't, then you need to. Because there's more information out there than you <coughs> may think. Um, but when you go to Google yourself, which sounds like something you normally wouldn't think to do, type in your full name, hit search, and then I want you to go and I want you to look at the specific requirements of what you can change. When you go to Google and you put in information, it automatically customizes the results for you, for your information, for what you've done on Google before. It'll customize those results. And this is just a generic search that was done, but as you do the searches, make sure you go through the second page, the third page. Look at what's out there, because it has become your online resume, whether you choose to look at it or not. Yes? So if I just Google my name, I could go to lots of pages before I find the name. Yes. But if, so like actually find yourself, like if I add Rochester, then it might come up. Mm -hmm. um, so then you're saying that applies to that. <coughs> yes. Take the time to look through it. Um, also, because you never know, you don't know what's going to come up 100% every time someone or an employer looks for your name on Google. It's very difficult to predict that because of how everything's set up. But when you do that, I just want you to take the time to go into the search settings and put something in there for the date and the time. There's also an option to, for, um, depending on your web browser, it may or may not show up as easily as others, but there's sometimes there's options that show up to take out the customization that Google builds in to help you find information that's most likely going to be relevant for you. So just take the time to go through it, go through the information, and see what's out there. Does that help a little bit? Where's, where does it all come from? Google? When it's found on the internet? Yes. If it's on Google, it just means it's out there on the internet. You may find information about someone who has the same name in a completely different state or country. I find that a lot because my last name is Smith. And if you go through that, you may not find a lot, or you may find something or an article about something that completely does not relate to you at all. But if you're aware of it, and if there's something big enough that you think it may, may be a good idea to mention it to an employer and say, if if you happen to look me up on Google, there's this article about so-and-so who has the same name, and it's not me. But they may know that, so it's just a lot of different information as far as what you're going to find and how you can deal with it. But it takes, it's important to take the time and look, look for the information and to just be aware of what's out there. Does that help? I know it sounds really weird, and everyone is going to be different when you go on there and you look for the information, but just take the time to do it. You never know what's going to pop up. It might be in um, an article about something that you didn't know about, or you may have someone with the same name that happens to be, in my case, there's someone with the same name that happens to, their profession is braiding horse hair somewhere out in Wisconsin. And I was like, well, that's not me, but there's information out there. So just take the time. I know it's, it's not exactly. Well, it's, just like, it's just like Facebook. It's a bunch of gossip. That yeah. Whatever you Yes, but there are ways to make it become, um, the further along that you get, the more that you use Facebook, the more you use Twitter. If you write a blog, write an article for something, put it up there on the internet, then more will start to come out on the internet when you search for your name that, has, that does relate to you. So I think what, con what employers have realized is when they go and research people on Google, they may not necessarily know who this person is. They may not be 100% sure that the person they're seeing on the internet is the same person as what sent them a resume. So they're going to the other sites as well. They're going to Facebook. They're going to LinkedIn. They're going to do their research because 
we all know and understand that hiring someone is very expensive. The turnover and just being able to train and put the investment into someone, it truly is a huge investment on their part. So you want to make it as easy as possible for them to, to reach you, to contact you, and so that you can, because you know that you have value. You know you have value that they need to fill that job. That's why you're going for the job in the first place. Does that help? I know it's, like I said. Did you have a question? Just by putting new information up. If there's something seriously that needs to be dealt with that's untrue about you or something, then there are ways to go in and can contact whoever put that up there and they can take it down. But it depends on what it is. Okay. Now we're going to jump into LinkedIn, which many of us are familiar with just even in the concept of LinkedIn. These are the two basic ones, and so if you've used LinkedIn at all, you probably are already familiar with these, and I realize that. But it's important to remember to make those connections and to ask for recommendations. Your bosses, your colleagues, former um, employers, it's okay to ask someone to write a recommendation for you. We do it as we ask people to be our references. But you just need to remember that these people need to have a specific they may want to have a specific um, thing that they're recommending you for, a specific quality, skill, project. So as you're doing that, just keep in mind that you don't want to just ask everybody. You want to be strategic about who you pick to write recommendations. And then you want to put skills on your profile. And if you go to that sample profile site, it'll show you some ideas of what to put on there. And you also want to optimize your profile. And like I said earlier, the information that's available on LinkedIn and what you should put in your summary and what you should put in your work experience and those descriptions, that varies, but there's a lot of tools out there that you can use. But this is the basic things that I want to point out, that you want to use third person. You want it to read naturally. It should not be choppy and disorganized and it should not be something that they struggle to process. The information it should be clear. It should be effectively communicating what you do and how you do it. And you also want to use keywords. Think about what you put on your resume and use some of those keywords on your LinkedIn profile so that you're consistently communicating what you do and what you're focusing on. And then also use a professional um, profile photo. This means basically, it doesn't have to mean that you have to go hire a professional photographer. This means that you need to take the time and realize that that's your first impression. People are drawn to photos. So if you have a f photo on there from something that doesn't necessarily convey a professional image, then you might want to consider changing it. I use the rule of thumb personally. Is this something, if what I'm wearing in that photograph does not look like the person that's going to come in for the interview, then I want to change that. I want it to be, to be me and to be natural and to be my, who I am just in LinkedIn form. But I also want to make sure that it's professional because I spoke with, um, I write the articles for Rochester Works on a side note. I write the articles for success stories. And I spoke with a gentleman a couple of weeks ago whose article we're publishing this week. He literally had a recruiter call him because they saw his profile. He had never contacted them. He had never worked, on, worked with them in the past. But he was so professional and so precise in all of his information that they wanted to hire him. They wanted to interview him for a job he didn't know about, for a company he didn't know about. And that blew me away. And of course, he took the time to invest and build his profile to update it. And that was one thing that for his industry and for his job, he needed to focus on. And when he focused on it and he did it well, they saw that and they wanted to contact him. So it, it is a real life tool. But, um, Take the time to just look at it, what's out there, and like I said, for more specific information that is available to you. Go to LinkedIn, look at their help center. There's questions and answers about what you should put in your summary. It's all out there, but you just need to look for it. And now we're going to dive into Facebook. But f before we do that, I want to kind of clarify a common misconception um, that I've heard when we talk about using Facebook as a means for your job search. Um, when we talk about using Facebook, we're not talking about going onto Facebook and publishing 
the fact that you're looking for a job every single day, almost as if you were calling that same employer every single minute, saying, give me a job, give me a job, give me a job. We're not talking about that at all. I just want to point out that Facebook is an incredible information resource that I think a lot of us aren't really taking advantage of. Um, when you talk about companies, companies sometimes have two pages. Sometimes they have a page for their, directed to their customers, which gives information about new products and new information about what they're offering. And then they have pages that are directed to their current and former, current and future, excuse me, employees. So what they want to do is they want to give you employee news. That's a great way for you to find out what the em employer's culture is. A lot of companies will put information about community events that their employees got to participate in. They'll get information about jobs. I know that um, Paychex consistently puts jobs out on social media. And some companies don't use Facebook. We're perfectly aware of that. They only focus on LinkedIn. But like I said, you need to know your industry and you need to know what kind of companies you're going for so that you can do thorough research so when you contact them, you know what kind of job you're going for, you know what kind of company they are, and you know what information you need to be looking for. You also need to think about who you know on Facebook and approach them. If you were to approach someone on Facebook and see if maybe they know someone in a specific company, Think of it the same way you would as if you were connecting with them on LinkedIn. If you'd rather do that on LinkedIn, go right ahead. But there are also connections that you have, real life connections that just happen to be on the internet to connect with them and see if they might be able to help you. They're your friends. They should know enough about you to know what, what you can do for this company. Does that make sense? For Twitter, there's a lot of different things that you can do. The website I gave you earlier about looking for information on Twitter that is, you don't need a profile for is excellent. Search.twitter.com is a great tool to look for information using those hashtags like we had talked about. But there's also other things you can do. Um, there are a lot of companies and corporate executives and business hiring managers and decision makers that are on Twitter for their company pushing information about their industry out on the web. And if you're willing to go on and take the time to learn how to use it, learn how to look for the information, that'll be a good asset for you as you talk to them and stay on top of your industry. If you've ever attended um, workshops or just job search advice in general, you have to stay on top of your industry. You have to know what your job may be called today because it probably doesn't have the same title that it did 10 years ago. They're consistently changing things. Um, new technology that's coming out. And Twitter is a good way to follow people who have those articles, have that information that you want. So you want to follow industry experts. You want to follow those employers because they do put jobs out there. You want to follow those topics. Look for those topics. Find out how to research on there. And you want to find people in your industry you may be able to connect with someone on Twitter, but the big difference between Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn is a lot more people will connect with people they don't know on Twitter. And it's not necessarily, here's my profile, here's your profile, let's connect and I'll be able to see where you've worked. Twitter is more information. It's small little snippets of articles and information that you want to share with people. So it's a it's almost like an online newspaper in some ways. There's a lot of other information on Twitter that is the um, clutter, I guess you could say. So you have to look for, you have to look for what you are really looking for and take the time to research as you would with anything. And these are just some basic websites that I wanted to share with you because I think they're a great resource to learn Twitter and to look for information. I told you about the first one, search.twitter.com. The second one, it's twello.com, is basically the yellow pages of Twitter. So if you're trying to figure out who in your industry might be on Twitter, that would be a great way to get started. Um, the job hunt org is another great resource that you can go to and they post job leads. Tweetmyjobs.com though is what I really wanna stress with you. It's an automated Twitter profile in some ways that automatically posts job leads that companies send them. So I personally follow Twitter 
and follow Tweet My Jobs, and they post job leads from across the United States every day, probably a dozen in, the, in a couple of day period. And they do that automatically as companies send them leads. So there's organizations out there that post job leads specifically for companies, but companies also post them as well. I believe Conserve, who is here today, posts job leads um, on their Twitter, and Paychex does as well, and there's other companies that you can find that do that as well. And then twitjobsearch.com um, is another resource that has ways in which you can use Twitter for your job search. Does everybody have what they need from that? Okay. After, yes? Isn't there something called, uh, uh, reminds me of an owl hoot or something? Uh, yes, Hootsuite. Hootsuite, yeah. Hootsuite is a tool for marketers, for people that work with social media, so that they can schedule social media posts and information ahead of time. What it does is it gives you an overall, um, the ability to, for instance, take information that I want to share with you tomorrow, but I might not have time tomorrow, and put it in the computer today, and it'll automatically put that on there for you. So from a personal level, I wouldn't necessarily recommend using the automated information, but from a marketing perspective, definitely it's an opportunity to make the most use of your time, because I'm not, you're not constantly going to be on these sites. Or if you, um, I know from my perspective at Rochester Works, we can schedule information on Facebook ahead of time so that we can put things out when more people might be on Facebook. But if we use, we can't do that for LinkedIn. That's not a feature that they have at this point. Does that make sense? So it's more of like a behind the scenes as you're posting information. Well, I, th I thought it was more of a uh, multiple channel reader. It can, it can do that as well. But what it focuses on primarily is putting out the information. It does allow you to read the information and it pulls in. Um, you can schedule and link all of your profiles to one page and it'll show you just the basic news feed or the basic information. So in, um, it's definitely something to look into if that's what you're more comfortable with and you'd rather do all of it at one time. But I tend to notice personally that it kind of depersonalizes a little bit and so you just get the tiny bits of information as opposed to the big picture. And it's um, structured in a way that it may pull keyword information so you might miss something. But if that's something you're interested in, it's a resource that you can definitely look into and do some more research on. Does that help? Mm -hmm. All right. So you want to focus on two key questions. So as kind of wrapping up the basic idea of social media for your job search, every one of you needs to answer this question before you even start going into using social media. You need to know where the jobs are and you need to know where the companies are. Who are you targeting? Do you have a target list of companies? Do you know who works in your industry in this area? Do you know companies that are going to use social media? Have you taken the time to find out if they do or not? Those are questions you need to ask because every industry is different, every job is different, but you need to be aware of and take the, act, take the time to actually look for the information to see if it's there. And then you also need to address the personal versus professional balance dilemma that a lot of people have when it comes to using social media for a job search. You use Facebook personally. I've heard this a lot. Facebook is completely personal. I don't want it to have anything to do with my job search. LinkedIn, however, I want to use for my job search. And that is a very personal decision. And so what you decide, do it well. What you decide and you want to do with social media as it comes to your personal job search, I can't give you all the answers for it. I can't tell you this is a better fit for you. That's not. Social media is a way that you can communicate who you are and what you can do for a company. So if you decide to use Facebook for completely personal and you don't want to deal with any of the research, you don't want to do any of that, that is perfectly okay. You can find that research out in other places, but you may not be able to get it for specific companies that don't put that same information on all of their websites. So if a company puts information on there, 
they may put that on their Facebook page and that may be the only place. So it comes down to your personal decision, your industry, your information, what are you going to do with the information that we're giving you today? What are you gonna do for your job search? Where are the jobs in your industry? If you don't know that, you need to go and research that. You need to find out who, who is gonna hire me? I can do this, this, and this. What kind of companies are looking for those skills and how can I fill the gaps that they have? Does that make sense? Okay. Before we kind of wrap up though, I do wanna address one important part of using the internet for your job search. Because I know that um, from identity theft, there's a lot of different problems and challenges that come from putting your information out on the internet. So I wanna address that um, just so you have the information and you're aware of it. But as you put, as you put your information out there, be careful of what information you're sharing about yourself. Um, I personally know uh, three or four people that have had their identity stolen. Not necessarily from using Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, but because they were caught unaware and they put more information than they thought out on the internet. So you need to be able to manage your privacy settings. You need to be able to be aware of the information that you're giving these organizations that use social media. <coughs> have you taken the time for, if you are on Facebook, have you taken the time to read through their, their privacy statement? It's very long and very boring. So if you're having a hard time falling asleep, I highly suggest it, it's a great read. But it is very important for your job search. It's important as you're putting information to keep track of where your information is going. If you put your resume out on a website or given your resume to a specific job application, have you read through the information of what they do with your contact information? Do you know if you can take that information back do they give it to employers? Do they put it in a database that someone just has to log into and they can see it? Those are questions you need to answer for yourself. And you need to keep track of who has your contact information. And I don't say that to say that you should never use the internet. Because like I had said earlier, it's an incredible tool for your job search and it's a part of our life today. We just have to be willing to address the issues, protect ourselves, protect our information and go forward from there. But as we go into that, I just wanna give you some general tips. This came from the Federal Trade Commission website. And this website, or the general information came from there um, as far as how to protect yourself. When you're in your job search, you have to share your contact information if you wanna connect with an employer. You have to share information about where you worked in the past. And you have to share information about where you wanna work, what your goals are, who you are. That's a big part of your job search. So as we address these issues, these are just some tips. And the Federal Trade Commission website, ftc.gov, they have a whole page full of tips and videos and interactive games. You can learn more about how to protect yourself on the internet, how to protect yourself if you're using free Wi-Fi, how to protect your home computer, step-by-step -step instructions and just information about how to protect yourself. And as we talk about the information, just keep that in mind because we don't, wanna, we don't wanna accept one and neglect the other. We have to look at this as a big picture and be aware of the fact that there are dangers, but you can address them and you can protect yourself and still use the resource. But these are some general tips to avoid job scams. I don't know if you've ever come across one or if you know of somebody that has been um, deceived by something like this, but I just wanna give you some general red flags. And if this is something you're interested in learning more about, Go to the Federal Trade Commission website. Look at information. Look at information out there about how you can protect your information. It's all out there, you just need to look for it. But be careful where you share your information. Your full date of birth on Facebook, for example, is a great example. When you create a Facebook profile, they ask for your date of birth because they have a policy that says you have to be above a certain age in order to create a profile, which makes sense. It'd be a little funny if a two-year-old had a Facebook profile they probably didn't make it themselves. So what you wanna do is you go into your privacy settings and you can hide that completely. You can protect that as much as you can. If you don't wanna share it, then you're not gonna be able to create a profile. And that's a decision, like I said, that you may, you need to consider. You need to be accountable for what you put out there. But um, keep track of where your information is going. Do you know um, if you've applied for jobs online? 
Do you remember the last five jobs that you've applied for? Do you remember those companies? What the job title was? Who has your information at that company? Simple things like that that I think we're in trying to get a job, sometimes you just kind of throw out all these resumes. And in a career conference like this, it's great because you're physically handing your information to a person who's going to look at that information and they're going to contact you. So I'm not talking about that, but more so just on the internet. And also take the time to research companies. Like I had said, and I've said a couple of times, the information is there, they're there. Take the time to learn about them. It'll help you in your interview. It'll help you in those things. But ask if you're unsure or you come across a company that you're not, if you're not familiar with and it sounds too good to be true, research them. Research and ask people if you've had informational interviews. Research and ask them about information. Have you ever heard of such and such a company? And if they haven't, take the time to research it some more because you want to protect yourself. And at a time when you are looking for work, you want that job. You want it and you need that job. But you don't want to take it at the expense of hurting yourself down the road. And so I want you to just take the time to consider that. And then also check out if you're, if you're having a hard time finding information about a company, check the New York State Secretary Office list of businesses or check the Better Business Bureau. Those are both listings of businesses that you can cross check just to make sure you cover your bases and you know, you know what's going on. Take the time to educate yourself, which is part of the reason why you're here. You want to learn more about a job search. And like I said, there's more information available, but take the time to learn it. And then also keep track of your information. Keep, start a spreadsheet or a document that says where you've sent your resume to, who has your information. Not only is that good for your follow-up, but that's also good so that you can, you know who has your information. And also don't post personally identifying information on the internet. When you use social media, it's easy to, rem to forget that it's public information, but it's on the internet and you need to be aware of the fact that they do what they can to protect it, but it is potentially public information, whether it, they choose it to be or not. So when you use the internet, just be careful, and not to, not to scare anybody or not to do anything like that, but I want you to be aware so that as educated job seekers, you can protect yourself and you can clearly communicate who you are and what you can do. Now we can all just kind of take a deep breath. <laughs> this is gonna be just a brief overview of some of the tools that Rochester Works has to help you in your job search. Um, it can be a little bit overwhelming. I, I understand. I'm still consi consistently studying and reading articles about all the social media that's out there. But these are some tools that can be helpful for you. And if you don't have one of the purple flyers that are on the back table, thank you. <laughs> these flyers are um, just a brief summary of the social media and other ways that you can stay in touch with Rochester Works. And if you look on here, if you have a smartphone, we have the QR codes so that you can scan them and automatically sign up or do what you need to do if you have a smartphone. If not, the URLs are also there and there's just a brief description about the information that we put out there so you know what you're signing up for and you know what kind of information you're going to get. And so if you haven't gotten one of those and they're in the back, please feel free. But this is the Rochester Works website. How many of you have ever visited this website? Okay. If you have not, or even if you have, I want to point out some key features that can help you find information, such as when we get the information with the, the handouts for all of the workshops, we're going to put information on our website, and I'm going to show you where you can find that. Um, on the... On your left, you find three tabs, job seekers, youth, and businesses. So based on who you are and the kind of information you want, you're going to click on those tabs. On the opposite side are workshop calendars, hot jobs, and our employer of the month. Workshop calendars is whenever we get a new calendar, or if you want to register for a workshop at Rochester Works, you go on there and you can register online. Hot jobs are, hot, are jobs that we get from employers that want help with sharing their job leads. And we have to update those every Friday. And this was taken a little while ago, but you can see that there's a date there. There's no more than two weeks worth of job works on that website. 
So when you're going there, you're seeing that they're current. They're current, they're up to date, and there's information so you can reach out to those employers. And I'm sorry, let's go back. On the bottom left, there's a tab that says Virtual Career Center, right here. If you click on that, it'll take you to this website, which is where the information about handouts is going to be posted. Um, and you can download resume templates from this website. You can watch videos about how to dress for an interview. You can watch success story videos of people that have gone through the programs and done well. Um, and so based on what your information you're looking for, you can also contact the uh, Department of Labor website through this one. It'll take you right to it. So if you're interested in looking for more interactive tools, more information, this is a great tool for you. And another tool that I personally put together every week, and so it amazes me that um, it's just it's so easy, you put together every week, we put together a summary of the new information from the week. Recruiting around Rochester. How many of you know about recruiting around Rochester? Every Monday, we have employers come to our Goodman Street Career Center and recruit and have on-the-spot interviewers with the public. We tell you in that email newsletter who's coming. We tell you what kind of jobs they're looking for. And we have that information on our website, but this kind of puts it in an email so you can check on it. We also put information about deadlines for our programs, Five Steps to Rapid Employment, Career Navigator, all of our workshops. We put new information and we just kind of summarize it and put it out there in an email every Friday. And we also put information about new job leads. And these are two main Rochester Works job leads. The one on the, the, one on the left, the hot jobs, is what I told you about on the website. The other one, network job leads, is contacts that we have and our training staff have. They know recruiters and they know people they've worked with in the past and every once in a while They'll send them an email saying, hey, I've got these job leads for people either in their company or people they know in general, and they just send them to us. So we put them all together in one location so that you can get access to them. And that is through our network job leads. And we put links to them. I'm sorry? I will go back real quick. Actually, I'm, I'm sorry? She said virtual career center. Yes. You'll go to the Virtual Career Center and click on Job Search, the blue square in the top left. And when you click on that, you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. On the right, it's right next to the hot jobs. And I actually have a flyer with the specific steps of how to get there if you're interested. So just let me know. If you, you may have also, if you stopped at the Rochester Works table, picked one up. If you have, then you don't need another one. But if you're interested in getting those in your email, we put them in here as well. And those, like I said, they're just general leads that we get sent to us, and we want to share those with you, too, because the leads are what kind of get you going as you start to look for jobs. So here are some just general um, resources. We're going to wrap it up, and then if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, but the social media contact card, that's that little flyer with the information, and that's just for your information. Um, the job leads flyer, if you need to know how to get to the job leads, on our website. I have a couple of copies, but we also have those available at our Rochester Works table, and we also are going to make them available online if you are interested in learning the step-by-steps of how to navigate to the job leads. And then also on the rwvcc.org, that's the URL for the Virtual Career Center, where we will be posting information about the workshops and the notes. And then the Career Center workshops. These are probably two of my favorite workshops that we do. Link up with LinkedIn and job search management. And job search management, Annie Walker, who introduced me, um, she does an excellent job of going over the whole process. Because it's overwhelming at times, and I don't know if any of you have taken that workshop, but if you have, she is able to make the job search process manageable. She gives you tips on how to do that, how much time you should spend, basic things like that that can help you. So as you're going through this, um, just remember that the internet does provide an amazing tool for you in your job search. Social media also does, but it's not the only thing you need to be focusing on. You need to remember that it is a tool and there, it expands your job search to a multi-dimensional level where you can connect with people in different states, different countries if you want to, to look for work. 
but it also means that you have to manage something in a little bit different way than maybe we had, in, had to do in the past. So as you're looking forward, just keep in mind that this is one piece of the job search process. This is one piece of how you can communicate your personal brand and who you are and what you do, what you stand for in the eyes of employers, your first impression. It's just another way that you can communicate this. So I hope that this has been a helpful resource to you as we've gone through it. I know it's a lot of information and if you don't use social media, some of it may have been a little bit overwhelming. But I hope that it's a resource for you and I hope that you are willing to connect with us and stay engaged with us so that we can continue to provide resources with, um, for you to help you in your job search. Are there any questions about anything that I covered or just social media in general? I'll do my best to answer them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do, do have, have at Rochester Works. Yes. yes, if you're coming there and you're using our resource room for job search, you're welcome to print out resumes, um, print out job leads as you look for them. Um, it's a resource for you. Um, as far as using social media while you're there, we do use LinkedIn. You can get on there, but um, with Facebook, since most of it is going to be research time. You might need to go to a library or something to look for that. Anyone else? All right. Well, as we wrap up, I'll let you get back to talking to employers and um, just get on with your day. I really am so grateful that you all came out to the career conference. This is my first career conference as a Rochester Works employee. And I'm completely blown away by, by how many people are here and how many companies are here looking for, for candidates. So um, as we help get the word out about these jobs that are, that are available, um, like I said, if you're interested in getting a flyer, if you didn't get one already, um, if you're interested in signing up for our weekly newsletter every Friday that gets sent out, we only send it once a week, and the only information that's in there is about information, new information that we're putting out on our website. So if you're interested in liking our Facebook page or doing any of that, it's completely up to you, but I want to make sure you have the resources so that you can stay engaged with the resources that Rochester Works has to offer you. So if you're interested, um, you can sign up your email on the back. If you're already subscribed and you write down your email address, we won't add you twice. It'll automatically tell us, this person already has their email in here. So don't worry about that if you're not sure. But um, if you have any questions or want to come and talk to me afterwards, feel free. I'll be here for a couple of minutes. But have a wonderful day and thank you so much for coming. I hope this information was helpful for you.